Dehancer Photo App for Lightroom and Capture One. I'm gonna be using the Capture One workflow today. I will edit two images, uh, talk about some technical difficulties I experienced using the Dehancer plugin and give my thoughts on the overall direction of the project. So let's get started. First image I'm going to be editing is this uh, afternoon scene of the Arakawa river bank. We have the river, a lot of grass everywhere, we have green grass, orange grass, yellow grass, uh, then we have uh, this bench in the darker part of the image, or well, a couple of words about the composition. Initially I was going to include some people sitting on the bench and there were people sitting on the bench when I was setting up the camera but they left by the time uh, I was done setting up so instead I decided to include a cyclist and a train crossing the bridge. So the goal for this image is to have somewhat low contrast image where I get all or most of the detail in the darker area which I think is the darkest part of the image and then I want to retain detail uh, some detail in the in the clouds and for uh, this part of the image the house is in the background the buildings in the background I don't really care about them uh, bl blowing blowing out but I do want to apply bloom and halation to make uh, to make it appear to make the atmosphere uh, as appear as haze, as hazy as possible. The technical goal for this image is to have as much detail as possible, both in contrast and resolution. And the artistic goal is to have uh, have a, an image that just speaks summer, the midsummer. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm I'm in capture one. Uh, before going into dehancer. I will uh, make sure that I'm retaining detail on the shadows and uh, the highlights and I am gonna adjust the colors a little bit just because I'm shooting with a Canon camera and Canons uh, tend to make yellows, make the skin tones go a little bit into the pink, into the red side, so I want to get rid of that to get a clean image going into the Dehancer app. So first of all, I'm not going to use Pro Standard Profile. It does get rid of that uh, purple cast a little bit. I'm going to use the generic extra shadow to get some detail here. Noise reduction, I don't need that. Both luminance and detail, I don't need any of that. And then same for sharpening. If you do want to sharpen your images, it is best to do that after editing them in Dehancer and after you get a, an edited TIFF file back from Dehancer, you can apply some sharpening if you like. And then film grain, uh, I'm gonna leave that off because I will be adding that in Dehancer. The first thing I'm gonna do is to adjust exposure. I'm gonna make the image as bright as possible without, before the clouds start blowing out, when the clouds in the sky start blowing out, something about 0.4, maybe 0.3, this looks good. These signs, I don't really care about them, I only care about the details in the clouds, maybe on this bridge as well. So now we're gonna go, let's name it properly, Con contrast, pull down the highlights a little bit and bring the blacks up. So. Now if you flip before, between before and after, that's what we get, nothing drastic. I'm just making sure that I get all the details. Uh, I get all the details in my TIFF files because this is a raw file and everything that is not on the screen right now is gonna get cut off and I'm gonna lose all that information. And I wanna retain the highlights in the the highlights in the clouds and the, these dark areas going into the T file, which we will send to the enhancer in a couple of minutes. And I'm also going to create a tone adjustment layer. I like to turn the opacity for that layer to 50% because the I'm going to be making really small adjustments. So I will pull the red layer 
towards the, the green, the teal, a little bit. So as you can see, there's nothing, there's not much difference, but the main reason I'm doing this for this image is, is I want to have the grass nice green and looking fresh. So this is before, this is after. You can also go into green, maybe pull it towards green a little bit to get rid of to further get rid of magenta color cast. Yeah, and this is looking good. So now we're gonna go uh, into the. We're gonna send this image into the dehancer dehancer pl plugin, and uh, this is the first problem that I have with the Hanser photo app. Normally I would, for apps such as Photoshop, you have them pop up in the edit with tab and for the Hanser you have to, every time you have to go to browse and then select the executable. Now these settings use TIFF uncompressed sRGB, only sRGB supported at this moment, so I'm not gonna change these settings as 16 bit as well and click edit variant. So yeah, I wish the Dehancer plugin would come up in this edit with or open with menu. It was it would save a lot of time, especially when editing a batch of images. So now that we're in Dehancer, another problem I have with this app is that uh, the presets and uh, the settings they don't get saved between the sessions. So again, if you're doing a, if you're editing a batch of images, you're gonna have to. I like to turn off the preview, and you're gonna have to do that and import all your presets, or even if it's just one preset, you're gonna have to import it for every single image you edit. So. I do have a preset uh, that I made on this particular image. So we're gonna see the final result first and then, then I'm gonna explain what I did to get to this result. Let's go back to original. I'm not gonna be using all of these tabs and what each of these tabs is doing. You can uh, go to the Hanser site and they have great manuals explaining uh, most of this, I think, or maybe even all of it. I'm not sure if there's a tutorial on vignette or something like that, but most of it is intuitive. Sliders such as color separation in the film devel developer tab, not that intuitive, but after playing around with it for on a couple of images, you can kind of get grasp of it. So let's get started. And you start, so I like to start with selecting a film profile. So this is your film stock and it's gonna uh, affect the image the most, I believe, apart from things such as contrast. And you should always do it first, I like to do it first. For this particular image, I'm gonna use Kodak Portra 400 because it's one of the few film stocks that I have shot, have actually shot uh, the analog version of. So I kind of know how it behaves and I'm going to use that. I'm not going to push and pull anything here and just use the normal exposure version. Now, another technical problem I have with the answer is this defringe. The source uh, tab, unless it's on by default and unless it is on, you can't, it seems that you can't use film developer. You can't adjust contrast unless the source is on. So. You have to turn it on basically. And uh, the fringe slider is in the middle at 50 uh, by default. And it's, I find that it doesn't work great, especially <coughs> on this image right here. So I have this metal structure, metal overhead structure. And with the default fringe setting, it just pulls all the color out of it and it's just completely gray, which is not great, which is very bad actually. So now going back to the Hanser uh, plugin, 
I'm gonna turn the, the difference down. I'd rather have some chromatic aberrations rather than uh, getting saturation pulled out of steel structures and things that are almost gray or close or look like they could be a chromatic aberration, I guess. So now let's go on to the film developer. Well, actually, no. Let's go on to the expand tab. This is According to the enhancer manuals, this is the first uh, thing you should adjust. So I'm gonna adjust my black and white points. I'm not gonna do anything drastic yet because I will be adding a lot of contrast and the these values, the leftmost and rightmost values might not change, but the perceived black and white points might change. So I'm gonna be conservative here. Or white point. I'm okay with it almost blowing up, maybe something like 94. So this is before and this is after. This is we added a little bit of contrast, but now we're gonna go into film developer and add some more. And as we started in contrast, as you can see, uh, we both lose detail on the darkest. Uh, area of the image and in the clouds and as I said in, at the beginning I want to keep both this shade area I'm gonna bring it back up using the gamma correction so as you add gamma correction as you turn the slider to the right the overall brightness of the image is gonna increase maybe something like this So as you can see now, there's almost nothing being lost. But now, if we go back to the clouds, we're losing almost all the all of the detail in the clouds. And I'm gonna bring that back using the film compression. Well, as you can see, even the default value works really nice. Uh, all the clouds are back, but I don't want such a strong effect. As you can see, it's reducing also the exposure on the grass and I don't really want that so I will turn the tonal range down to affect only the brightest highlights maybe something like this so now we're only affecting the brightest part of the grass and the sky which is which is fine and the impact something like 20 should be fine so now let's zoom into the, to the clouds and here's another technical difficulty that I have with the Dehancer plugin is that you can't double click to zoom in, only to zoom out, I think. And then if you try to zoom in on, a, for example, on the left part of the image, it's zooming to the middle of the image, which is not the behavior I, I expected. So now let's zoom into the clouds. Turn the uh, film compression off. This is before. As you can see, well, you can't see any detail on the clouds. And now with it on, it's back. We could actually turn the impact up a little bit more. Something like this. Now, color boost. As I said, I want this image to be saturated. So I'm going to turn it up. Something like this. I don't want to... I want to have nice and lush greens but <clears throat> don't I don't want to get too much saturation in this hay part of the of the grass so maybe something like 30 yeah this is looking nice so now that we're done with the general with the global adjustment of the image I'm gonna go into film grain halation and bloom I will be skipping print for this particular image because I'm editing uh, it for to be viewed on the web, so I don't really care about the print or replicating print for this particular image. So I will start with halation for the preset I developed for this image. The halation probably, the halation uh, tab probably took the longest to get a desired result there's a lot of sliders and maybe hiding things such as blue compensation hue maybe even amplify under advanced step would reduce the you know the metal the mental 
capacity needed to process the amount of sliders on the step. Now we can go into the mask mode and see where the halation is being produced. Uh, instead I like to turn the impact to 100 and see it actually the way it's blend, it blends with the original image. So I'm not going to change the source limiter. Instead I will turn the background gain down to get the halation only on the darkest part of parts of the image like these shadows on the bridge. Smoothness, I'm not going to touch it. Global diffusion, probably don't need it yet. So I'm going to turn it down for now. Local diffusion, maybe a little bit more, something like this. I don't want it to go, in, uh, to go wild. Just a little, just a little hint of a red, just a little red stripe along the, the hard transitions. Amplify, turn it all the way down. Bring it back a little bit. That's about it. Now we can turn the local diffusion back up a little bit. Do we start to see the halation background gain up? Something like this. So this is before and after. Maybe background gain up a little bit more because I want to get halation here as well on these buildings as well. Local diffusion down, background gain even further up. Now as you can see we get halation both on the darker parts of the image and on the brighter on these buildings. The effect is not too drastic so we can turn the global diffusion a little bit up. That's what we get. As you can see with the global diffusion up the this part, especially this part of the yellow grass, it gets warmer. So now we're not 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 only we are affecting the harsh transitions, but we are also warming the image up overall, which is fine with me because normally I would go into the print, not not the print version. No, no, no. Normally I would go into the color head and turn turn the yellow, turn the uh, the yellow blue slider towards yellow a little bit, maybe return the shadows towards blue to counteract that, to make to make the image warmer, to warm up the image a little bit further, and that's about it. The for halation. Now uh, let's go into the bloom. <clears throat> Again the default value works fine. I don't want it to be uh, to be diffusing too much so I'm gonna turn the diffusion down. Maybe a little bit further. Turn the amplify down. Again, I want to affect only the harsher transitions uh, with the bloom to just make the image a little bit softer overall, but not. I'm not going for an artistic effect here. It's purely a technical adjustment in case of this image. And that's about it. So this is before. This is after. As you can see, we're losing some of the contrast between this bridge and the train uh, that's on top of it, that's inside of the bridge, actually inside of the structure. And while having a high contrast image, we are able to make it a little bit smoother with the bloom, with the bloom filter. Now let's adjust the film grain. The goal with the film for the film grain for this image is to smoothen the transition to black, to pure black a little bit. And the default adjustment doing that's f that pretty well actually. As you can see we have this somewhat dark area and this area is pure black and I want to smoothen this transition here without losing too much, too much contrast. And with grain we are able to achieve that. I'm gonna turn the, I'm gonna turn the resolution up because I don't want to lose detail for this particular image amount is probably 10 or something like that is fine. Color, I don't need too much color noise for this image. 
maybe actually none. And now mid tones, something like this grass here. I don't need much noise as well as for highlights. So I'm gonna turn these down to keep most of the noise in the shadow areas. As you can see, here's the before. And after we are we are losing some of the exposure and the highlights, so I'm gonna turn that these two down even further. And this is, yeah, this is looking pretty good. So obviously you can sp spend a lot of time playing with film grain inhalation and then contrast to get uh, the your desired result. And even just selecting a film profile, adjusting your film developer tab, uh, maybe giving some halation and grain to your image, you can get a great result in just a couple of minutes. And I've had a lot of fun uh, just selecting just opening all sorts of images I shot in the past uh, and shooting now and seeing uh, how different film profiles look on them and what I can do by pretty much only these two tabs by just in contrast and, and uh, the compression which acts similar to highlight slider in Capture One. If we click OK, the image is going to be saved. Our adjustments are now applied to the TIFF file and we can do some further adjustments such as sharpening. Sharpen the image a little bit. Now it's ready to be exported. So here's the second image we're going to be editing with the Dehancer plugin. And unlike the previous image, the goal for this one is not to have as much details as possible, uh, but instead have an, have an artistic edit to, to have this image uh, create an impact as a whole instead of it being a bunch of pixels. So we're gonna add a lot of grain, which will pretty much prevent people from zooming in on the image. The blacks are gonna be crushed, crushed. The whites, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna blow them out. I wanna prioritize the atmosphere of this shot to make it look like it was shot, or well, it was shot in the uh, underground in the subway. I want to make it look dirty, if that makes sense. Although there's no, there's still no way to use, you know, film damage uh, tools in the Dehancer Photo version. But without using those, I'm gonna look this, make this image look as dirty as possible. Again, if that makes sense. So let's get started. So I already did uh, basic adjustments to this image, such as. Uh, in a little bit of exposure because we started with this. Uh, as you can see, white balance was also adjusted. If you're going to be adjusting white balance, you should do so before going to, into the enhancer. Contrast, <clears throat> again, I'm using the, well, actually it's R10, so I'm using Pro Standard instead of adjusting the tone. And I'm also using the Film Extra Shadow to get the maximum detail out of this image. Now let's go into the the answer again, we have to browse for the executable file every time, same settings. So for this image, I'm going to use the CineSteel 800T. Again, the fringe, we don't need any of that. Now, actually before adjusting these sliders that I adjusted first for the previous image, I'm going to go into the uh, color head and cool down this image even further. Now, I don't want to get blue color cast, so I'm gonna counteract this adjustment by uh, warming up the shadows a little bit. So here's what we got. I don't want this image to be on the color side, unlike the previous one. Uh, now we're gonna go into the film developer. I'm gonna add some contrast, but not too much, because there with this lightning situation there already was a lot of contrast. Now for the saturation on the color boost, you can try pulling it out. And it doesn't really seem to work for this particular image because I do want to keep this green, this red, pink, this brown. So I'm gonna add a little bit. Maybe this is too much, some like 25 for this image should work. And that's about it. Again, even though I said that I don't want to keep any detail on the blacks and in the whites. I want to keep 
do you want to adjust the gamma the gamma the uh, the midtones to keep some on, of the details on the face of the model maybe something like this now we're gonna go to film compression uh, again I don't need too much here because I don't care about these uh, whites blown out instead I want to have as much contrast as possible with this image something like that should work, expand black point something like this should work white point so here's the before and after and as I said I want to get rid of the of most of the detail and the smaller detail in this image so that it works more as a whole instead of you know pulling your attention to the minor details so something like that should work I could correct do the gamma correction a little bit further I should, should probably should have adjusted shadows in the capture one or should have done a local adjustment on the face now the colors we already adjusted halation as I've heard the Cinesteel 800T has a lot of halation so I'm still gonna turn the, the background blur a little bit local diffusion do you want in the previous image I used halation and bloom mostly to soften up the image and not given and not as an effect but here I do want to use it as a you know as an artistic effect and for it to stand stand out so for this image as well I do want it to do the halation to follow the harsh transitions although the effect is more pronounced than in the previous image but I don't want it to you know going wild and affecting the image as, as a whole too much especially since it's gonna uh, warm it up and we don't want that I did the opposite in the color head in fact now, now with the grain unlike the previous image uh, I don't want to keep, keep the fine detail so I'm gonna turn the size up resolution maybe turn it down a little bit size can go up a little bit more amount more 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 it's fine to have a lot of grain something like that now it's too much grain in the midtones shadows I want them to be pretty much gone highlights so now as you can see uh, by applying the film grain we are starting to get a lot of detail back both in the shadows and in the highlights so I'm gonna go back to expand tab and adjust the uh, black point at the white point accordingly to counteract what we did with the film grain and here is before and after and I think I overdone this image a little bit maybe I would go back and turn the halation down and then uh, play around with the details and the highlights but this is pretty much what you can get if you go if you use the dehancer plugin for an artistic effect and not as a technical uh, tool so overall I've had a lot of fun using uh, the Dehancer plugin for Capture One. While there is a couple of technical problems, I think they should get uh, fixed in the future. And I also hope that the Film Damage tab gets added into the photo ver version of the app. Now the biggest issue, and it's not issue at all actually, with the Dehancer plugin I have is... Well, there is a lot of documentation and uh, tutorials on how to use you know different sliders and tap a lot of technical tutorials on the Dehancer website I wish there were also artistic tutorials that explain how to not just replicate a particular film look but how to use the plugin artistically to achieve you know for example which film stock you would use to capture which scene and not the other way around uh, because there's a tutorial that explains the technical specification of uh, motion picture film stocks and which uh, scene you would use for a particular film stock and I wish it there was a tutorial that goes the other way around which uh, allows you to choose a film stock based on scene or uh, explains which film stock uh, works best together to capture a particular mood 
and yeah that's pretty much the biggest uh, my biggest request for the enhancer team and obviously we as artists should keep exploring and uh, it's also up to us to you know create those tutorials or find the ways to use tools such as the enhancer so yeah again had a lot of fun see you next time cheers